When we breathe, we take oxygen into our bodies and exhale carbon dioxide. At least that's the basic process. More precisely, what's actually going on inside our bodies? How does it happen? And what actually can go wrong with the whole process? Well, in general, the air around us which we breathe in contains approximately 21% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide. When we breathe out, it contains about 16% oxygen and 4% carbon dioxide. The human lungs have a capacity of about 6 litres of air. However, it's impossible for us to completely empty our lungs and then refill them. So what we have is what's known as tidal volume, the amount of new air which is available in the lungs with each breath. The maximum tidal volume that we have in the human lungs ran around 3 litres of air. However, during standard breathing, this is only about half a litre of air is actually exchanged. Also, because deep within our lungs are the tiny alveoli, or the cauliflower-shaped sacs in our lungs, where the gas exchange takes place, those are actually coated in water. So when we breathe out, the air also contains additional water vapour, which can clearly be seen on cold winter mornings. The alveoli are surrounded by tiny little blood vessels, which take the oxygen from the air and release carbon dioxide. There are two important parts of the blood here, the red blood cells and the serum. Now the red blood cells carry the oxygen around our bodies. And these have a saturation level or a maximum capacity for oxygen. Now in healthy human, the amount of oxygen red blood cells carry is normally between 95 and 100% saturated. Were it to drop to around about 80% or less, are likely to experience organ failure. However, this does create a problem for the human body. In order to operate properly, it needs a good supply of oxygen, but it doesn't want to expend unnecessary energy in breathing. So, how to measure when the body needs extra oxygen without risking damage to vital organs? I'm trying to measure the difference between 95% saturated and 100% saturated red blood cells be really difficult. So instead, it uses the other part of the process. The serum, or the fluid part of your blood, is actually responsible for carrying the carbon dioxide, normally in the form of bicarbonate. When bicarbonate is dissolved in liquid like blood serum, it lowers the pH due to an increase in hydrogen ions from carbonic acid. So by measuring the acidity level of the blood, your body has a relatively good idea when it needs to take additional fresh air. Not because the oxygen level is too low, but instead because the carbon dioxide levels are too high. We could, of course, consciously override this mechanism and take over control of breathing for ourselves. But if we lose consciousness or are distracted, our autonomic breathing takes over. This process is generally highly effective and efficient, but it can run into severe problems when the air surrounding us has unusual properties. For instance, at high altitude, the air we're breathing in is very thin and has less oxygen in it. So, although when we breathe normally we remove the excess carbon dioxide, we don't actually take in enough oxygen. However, because the body isn't being swamped by carbon dioxide, it doesn't realise it's actually short of oxygen and this can result in altitude sickness. Now, the other issue is with carbon monoxide which can be created when fuel is burnt with a restricted supply of oxygen, like in a faulty heater to partially blocked ventilation system or something similar. Unlike carbon dioxide, which is carried safely in the blood serum, the carbon monoxide binds the haemoglobin in the red blood cells, and the chemical bond is actually far stronger than that of oxygen to the haemoglobin. So once it's attached itself to the red blood cells, it's very difficult to remove. This formation of carboxyhemoglobin means that the red blood cells deliver far less oxygen to our cells, and especially our brain cells, reducing our ability to think clearly and figure out what's actually happening. Also, because less oxygen is reaching our cells, less carbon dioxide is being produced. So rather than increasing the amount of oxygen, our body may actually slow down the breathing process. Exposure to excessive amounts of carbon monoxide results in death is why it's important to have carbon-based heating systems serviced 
properly and regularly to prevent carbon monoxide uh, poisoning. So that's the breathing process, a little bit more complicated and there are some problems that can go wrong with it.